Good morning, Pashley children. I hope you had an amazing half term and you managed to have a whole week off, relaxing, uh, chilling out. That's just what I did, but I'm ready and raring to go with some more lessons. Now you'll be very pleased to know that I am not doing phonics lessons this term. I'm going to be doing your maths lessons. Um, and they're gonna be very slightly different than normal because we're going to be working through the booklet that you got sent home um, before the holiday. So this is the autumn term block two addition and subtraction booklet. Um, so the lessons are gonna be slightly different because I'm going to model what you're then going to go off and do in your booklet. So we all do, like we do at school, we always do a, a we do, a you do um, activity. So I demonstrate it, I model it and show you how to do it. And then I'll send you off and say, now do pages, whatever pages they are, two, three, and four. Uh, we'll see how we go. It's going to be slightly different than normal. So I'm going to share my screen um, to begin with. But a note here for parents, first of all, um, this is a going to be quite a quick whiz through this booklet uh, because the children have covered um, some of the addition and subtraction within um, 10 um, in, in school time, but we thought it would be useful to have a real quick revision. So this booklet, I'm hoping to get in um, finished within two weeks. So if you um, find the lessons are going way too quick for you, um, then do slow down. If I put too much in one lesson, then just stop when your child's had enough and pick the lesson up the next day. Um, and on the other um, side of that, please adapt these lessons um, to see, suit the needs of your child. If your child is finding the sums and the numbers that we're doing um, too easy, then just adapt the sums um, to give them some calculations within 20. So instead of like, you know, the, with this booklet, it might say eight add three, you could change that to 18 add three. Uh, we could have a nine add two, you could change that to nine add 12. So um, you know exactly where your child is. You've been teaching them brilliantly at home. So by all means, pause any of these lessons, look at the booklet and say, no, that's too easy. I'm going to change those for you. But we're going to give it a go and we see how we get on. OK, so as always with our math lessons, we're going to start with a little bit of number formation. And we're going to recap again from two. The reason I've gone from two is because our number one literally starts at the top and goes down. And I think everybody knows how to form our number one. So our number two, can you remember? It's half a heart will never do slide to the right and make a two. So if I get my pen, let me have a look. Let's see, so half a heart. So here you can see the shape of half a heart. And they're saying it will never do. So you slide it to the right to make a two. So as you're doing it, half a heart will never do. Slide to the right and make a two. There we go. So half a heart will never do. Slide to the right to make a two. Just pause the video and practice that just a few times. Fabulous. So every lesson also has a, a maths fluency lesson. So the fluency is really just to get your child quick at answering questions and their number facts. Um, now, I found a fantastic game. Um, I've given you the link in uh, maths in the, num in the class dojo to this, this site. But I'm hoping if I share my screen, I can just talk you through it for the first time. Uh, let's have a look, see if I can do it. So it's this game, I think. OK, so when you um, log in for the first time, you can see it automatically comes up onto times tables down here, up here, question type, multiplication. But we're not doing times tables. We haven't done that yet. We are still on our place value and our addition and subtraction. So I just click on addition. And already you can see how it's changed up here. So I've got 20 points to win. 
I am going to be a cat, uh, pirate, that's my character, but I could be a bunny or an explorer or a princess or a robot. And I can also choose, if I go down here, the numbers I would like to use. It's set at default up until the number 12. Do you think your child can do numbers up to 20 or 30? Um, it's up to you. So you can actually change the values here, what numbers you would like to do. And then you start the game. And you start the game and hopefully you can still see what I can see. But if you haven't, you'll see it on your game. It says, first of all, what is one add one? Pop in two, enter. And we can create, oh, it's jump then to a nine add 12. So you add, put your answer in, your child will be working this out and you would put your answer in as, let's get one wrong because I haven't got one wrong yet. So let's see what happens when we get one wrong. 11 add three. So you're counting on from 11. And if you add three, let's make that 16. Oh, there you go. You go back a step. And then you obviously have to get to the end of the bridge to win. So, stop the share on that one. So I think you can um, choose any addition. There's addition and there's subtraction games on there. So you can play one of those every single day. I might give you a different fluency task, but there's always this one to go back to and the children will love it. So let's go back to, let's see if I can go back to sharing my screen. It's very complicated, all this. Uh, where was I? Over here. Hopefully that's where we left off. So pause now, play a maths fluency game, and then we'll get started. Okay. So part, part part whole model, we're going to call them now, part whole. Um, and this is, see if you can see in the corner here, this is the we do. So how many sweets do we have to all together? So all together, how many sweets do we have? That's right. All together, there are seven sweets. So our whole number is seven. So we'll now work out how many red sweets there are and how many green sweets there are. There are three red sweets and there are four green sweets. Three red sweets and four green sweets. So looking at that in our part whole models, what was our whole number again? That's right, our whole number is seven. And the parts are, let's see, let's, we haven't got the parts in. I've put my whole number in seven. So tell me how many um, green sweets I need to put in. Thank you. So one of my parts is four. And the other part, how many red ones? That's right, three. So my whole number is seven. Can you repeat that after me? The whole number is seven. The parts are four and three. Should we do that one big sentence all together with me? Brilliant. The whole number is seven. The parts are four and three. So if you pause your booklet, uh, no, pause the video I'm in, and you're going to do pages four and five of your booklet four and five it's called the part the part whole model with objects and it is just the same as what we've been doing in class for the last few minutes pause your booklet pause your video great so we just move on a little bit with objects because we have done quite with objects at school. So we're moving on. We're going to put on um, counters in for our part whole models now. We're going to draw our counters in. So this first diagram here that you can see, this first is our whole number at the top and our parts have been filled in for us. So I know my parts are, what are my parts in the first one? 
and that's right, it was two and one. So what's my whole number? That's right, my whole number is three. So if I put in one, two, three. So the whole number is three and my parts are two and one. Could you say that for me, please? Fantastic. So over here, we're moving on really quickly. We have our numeral um, representation instead of counters. So I've got a number here. What's that number? Good, four. And I've got how many counters? That's right, two. So my parts, what are my parts in this model? Because one's a number and one's a counter. But it should be the same. My parts are four and they are two. So while I'm writing the two, can you be working out what my whole number is? That's right. If my parts are four and two, my whole number will be six. So the whole number is six and the parts are four and two. Can you repeat that for me? Fantastic. Right, let's carry on. As I said, I am moving through this quite quickly. So at any point during these videos, if I've just gone a little bit too quick, just pause, go back, because some children might need a lot more thinking time about the whole numbers and the part numbers. But pause at any time you want to. So this is just the same, but in your booklet, in your booklet, when you come to do yours, you just have to fill in some of the numbers, but we can't fill in these numbers until we've worked out our whole part model. So can you tell me whether the whole number has been filled in? No, it hasn't, has it? I've got my parts, haven't I? What are my parts? That's all right, four and three. My parts are four and three. So could you take a minute, a few seconds now to work out what my whole number would be? Do pause. That's right, my whole number would be four and three is seven. So <clears throat> the whole number is seven and the parts are four and three. So, Something is a part. Well, which ones of those were my parts again? Thank you. That's right. Four is a part. There you go. Four is a part. So my other part must be <coughs> three. That's right. So what was my whole number again? That's right. Seven. So if you look at your booklets now, if you look at your booklets now, um, pages six and seven will have some more examples of these. So pause now and complete pages six and seven of your booklets. Okay, did you manage that? All right, let's go back and share it again. Okay. So let's see what am I going to do next? So it's all very similar, but you will get less and less help in your booklets and we have to put them in. So what, what addition sentences did we need? So let's just go back and remind ourselves. So if our whole was seven and our parts were four and three. So if our whole number is oh, let's see. I'm just going to pause there just for a minute while I quickly do something. Right, let's try again. So our whole number was seven. So we had four, one, two, three, four, and we had five, six, seven, because we had four of one and three of the other. So our parts were one, two, 
three, four, and one, hopefully you're quicker than me, two, three. So look at our STEM language again. This is what we always like to repeat so that the children um, um, embed the STEM language because it is always repetitive. So our whole number was seven and our parts were four and three. So our whole number up here was seven and our parts were four and three. So if I get my pen here, I have my calculations. You have to complete your addition sentences. So what, add what, gives me my whole number. What, add what, gives me my whole number. That's right, if we add our parts, it equals the whole number. So my parts were four, add three, equals seven. So why have I got another box underneath there? What else could I do? Have a think, have a pause and tell your grown up why we've got another calculation box. That's right, because we have already learned, haven't we, that in addition, you can swap your parts round. Okay, you can swap them round. So I could have four and three, or I could have, swap them around, three and four. So that's right. So we could also have three add four equals the whole number seven. Fantastic. So I've got some parts. I haven't got a whole number yet, have I? I can see two parts. What is my whole number? Pause and have a think, work it out if you need to. That's right. If I had six and two as my parts, my whole number would be eight. Fantastic. And by now you should be really good at your addition sentences. We add our parts. We can add our parts. So one part is six, add two equals the whole number eight. And we've just, we know that we can turn our addition sentences around to have two add. That's wrong, Mrs. Burton. Let's rub that one out. See, teachers love to make mistakes. You love catching us out, don't you? Two add six equals eight. So let's do the stem sentence once more together. The whole number is eight. And the parts are six and two. Fantastic. So again, pause now and this time complete pages six and seven of your booklet, which will be just more of what we've been practicing already together. So pause your book, pause your video. Brilliant. What I want to just very quickly touch on, um, when we sent some maths home um, a few weeks ago now it was, and you were doing your part, part, whole place value. So you were given a number and you had to put your uh, numbers in, uh, you had to put your parts in. So I'm just gonna leave you with a question here and you're gonna pause and have a chat. So what is wrong with this part, whole model? What's wrong with this diagram? There's my whole number and there's my part and my other part. So what's wrong with this? Right, okay. Yes, so Mrs. Burton sillily has just split her whole number. What's my whole number here? 15, it's one, 10, five. So I put my one in a part and I put my five in a part, but I'm wrong, aren't I? It isn't one in there, is it? It's not one, 
it is one of these, which we know is not a one, it's a 10. So now when I add my parts, what 10 add five, I get 15. Whereas if I had it before, I had one in one and five in the other. Ooh. And if I added one and five, I'd have only got six. And six wasn't my whole number. So I forgot to put my 10 in there. I put my one by mistake, but it isn't, it's one 10. So this time my whole number is 15 and my parts are 10 and five. We always love to end our lessons on a reasoning rabbit. So this is, what we're gonna do is just, this is a talking activity. It'd be really nice just to talk to your grown-ups, have a look what it's asking you to do, because reasoning is all about speaking, telling your person, your grown-up, um, why something's going on. And this one is asking you, which of those images, which of those pictures can help us complete that um, addition calculation? And can you explain to your grown-up which picture you've chosen and why you've chosen it? Can you explain to them why you've chosen it? Could you come up with a number sentence to explain the pictures? Could you come up and think of a number sentence for each of the other two images that you didn't choose? Now, we have missed out some pages in our booklets. I didn't do the first pages two and three and pages 10 to 20 in your booklet. Um, I just want you to cover them in your own time over the next week or two. This is mainly because it's work on number bonds, which we have done so much in class. Um, I just know that the children will be able to work on those, maybe one a day, a page a day. So pages two and three and then pages 10 to 20 um, in your own time over the however long you want to take to do it. This is the last slide. I've put this on, um, I'm going to put this on the last page on all our slides. And um, because this is all about addition and subtraction, I just thought some children might like to have a few calculations to work out. So I have, I have just put a few ads and a few takeaways, subtractions. Um, you don't have to do these. These are just extras. Um, so by all means do. But I'm just going to pop that one up again as your last one to remind you of what pages you can continue in your own time. So pause if you need to write those down. So that's our first maths lesson. Um, I don't know if it was too much in one lesson yet because it's the very first time that I've done this. As I said at the beginning of the video, if it was too much, I'm really sorry. And I hope you paused it and just did what you could do in say maybe the 45, 50 minutes that you were doing maths. Some of you might have got through it all. Big thumbs up, resilience, what raccoons you are, perseverance pandas. So well done. Um, I will see you again tomorrow and we will continue with our maths lessons and going through some of the pages in our booklet. Okay, bye-bye.